So uh, title of my presentation is Blackboard Predict, um, Ulster's project to improve retention rates. So I thought it'd be really helpful in the room to get an indication from, from you how many of you know about Blackboard Predict or have seen anything about Blackboard Predict. Can I get a show of hands in the audience if you're aware of it? There's three or, three or four people. So um, this is the marketing statement uh, uh, from the Blackboard Predict website. Um, um, I'll, I'll not read out, but this is the Ulster summary or the translation of uh, the predictive analytics solution um, from our perspective. So um, Predict is a predictive learning analytics solution um, which uses historical student data and outcomes to identify similar characteristics with the current cohort of students. So as a student progresses through Ulster's uh, uh, student record system and engages with Ulster, um, it compares that, that person's interactions, but also some demographic data, some data about that individual, um, um, some information about the amount of uh, uh, expected family contribution, um, looks at things like their address profile, uh, and compares uh, demographics and activity with previous cohorts to, to assign a percentage score of that student passing. Passing the module with a score of 50% above or passing the program with 50% or above. So um, all the prediction is doing is looking at historical and comparing it to the current cohort and assigning uh, a, a prediction um, of, of the likelihood of that student passing the program. So the, the, this presentation is not going to go into too much detail showing you the dashboards and learning analytics. It's going to be a bit of uh, a, a, a presentation about our experience rolling out the system and what we're hoping to achieve. But I thought it'd be helpful just to give you a bit of background about what you see in the predict interface if you were to implement it. Um, so the predict interface, this is an example screenshot. I can't use live student data um, at Ulster University in the presentation. But this shows you an example screenshot from within the, the predictive analytics dashboard. Um, and this is a, a, a listing of students with a percentage score of those students achieving 50% uh, or above. It aggregates data from our student record system, which is Banner, um, and combines that with Blackboard interactions um, and, and presents a lot of complex data in a very simplified UI. Um, so the, the difference between Blackboard Predict, as, as I see it from other analytics solutions that we've reviewed, is the simplified UI and the, 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 the presentation of quite a complex um, algorithm into a very simple, actionable interface. But one of the most important things about the, the, the approach we've taken at Ulster is that every academic member of staff or administrator or anybody involved in that student journey will have standard data availability for all stakeholders. So instead of, of dashboards being available to specific studies advisors or a particular role within the institution that is responsibility for retention, we have made the decision that anybody uh, that, that is involved in that student experience will have access. So that can be people involved in learning support. It can be people from student support. Um, so it's, it's about getting rid of those data silos within the institution and standardizing that data availability to everybody. So the aims of the presentation today are to introduce Ulster's historical approach to retention data and interventions and to describe the vision for better data-informed decision making, which is a key part of, of, of why we've implemented Blackboard Predict, and to demonstrate how Blackboard Predict supports this new vision in the institution and to talk a little about the technology which in all these sorts of projects is the simple part and more about the lessons we have learned during the pilot, the governance policy and ethics of our learning analytics pilot. Um, and more importantly, it's also to recognize there's a lot of discomfort about, new, this, this has been uh, replayed, this argument many times within our working groups um, about neoliberal surveillance and compliance student populations. Our some of our academic colleagues have a, and our students have a real discomfort about data and ethics and what our institution is doing with their, da their data. And I think that's a really important consideration. It's really important to be aware of those arguments. 
Um, and when I was, when I was uh, preparing for this presentation, I thought this was a really excellent uh, a quote from a presentation called Responsible Learning Analytics from Paul Princeton in, in South Africa. Um, and he describes learning analytics as a layer on top of deeper, often hidden layers, assumptions and beliefs regarding the function of higher education, how we define learning, how we measure and validate learning, and also the philosophy about how that uh, learning is enclosed within a learning management system. Um, when we have started the journey of implementing a Blackboard Predict Learning Analytics, all those conversations have come through our committees and structures, and there is a disc, a, 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 um, problems um, um, with, with uh, uh, the interpretation of analytics within the institution. Um, but I thought it was really interesting, the end of that comment as well. Um, it's also about the philosophy of how we see data and the gender, race, and epistemologies of those who develop the codes and algorithms. And that's a little bit about bias and how those algorithms are generated. And we've had some really interesting intellectual debates um, as, as part of this project um, around that responsible use of learning analytics. These are some words that I found through our committees and structures when we started a learning analytics project. We had some members of staff who were very pessimistic about the opportunities for learning analytics to accurately predict a multifaceted student experience to say this student is likely to fail based on their digital interactions. We had many academic staff that made the argument that it is impossible to, to, uh, to accurately measure the, the, the multifaceted um, activities that are going on in a student experience. We had some people who felt that because learning analytics is relatively immature um, at the moment, um, they were still undecided because they didn't feel that there was a lot of literature that we could reflect on and, and benchmark our practice against. And then we had many people in the university who saw the potential of, of, of learning analytics as transformational or game-changing, and they were quite comfortable with the, the uh, machine learning and uh, uh, um, um, artificial intelligence that, are, that there was behind some of these predictions. So a little bit about predictive learning analytics at Ulster. Um, I put this slide up because Ulster's putting in a, a new city centre campus at the moment in Belfast. Um, it's a £250 million investment and uh, our senior management like us to talk about that everywhere we present. So <laughs> that's a, an artist's impression of what our new city centre campus is going to be like. And it's, it is a very interesting project because it's being built in a part of North and West Belfast that's been um, uh, very much, um, um, I suppose, being defined by the Troubles. Um, and uh, it's very close to the Shankill Road, Falls Road, North and West Belfast, where a lot of people um, um, were, were, were involved in the Troubles. And it's seen as a civic university and the first uh, uh, building and institution that's connecting those communities into the, civic, uh, the city centre. So the vision is for a civic university, um, which is quite interesting because the Ulster demographic is uh, the vast majority of our students are first in their uh, family to go to university. Um, they're all often from um, widening access backgrounds um, that, are, that, that, that would suggest that they mightn't be successful. And predictive analytics is very much helping us um, target uh, um, our, our interventions to, to, to students from particular backgrounds and particular demographics. So the current context of why we're involved in predictive analytics, we have a new vice chancellor in 2015. I know this is very common from, from uh, uh, a lot of your institutions, but at Ulster we had a, a period of relative stability and we had a, our previous vice chancellor was there for um, about 10 or 12 years. We had stability in our education portfolio. We now have new strategic direction, a new PVC education who started in 2016, who's very connected to JISC and the HEA, and is very interested in learning analytics. And uh, his vision is for curriculum redesign processes and new targets for faculties and schools around retention, progression, and attainment, and quite challenging uh, uh, targets as well. Um, so to give some history about how we, we ended up uh, procuring Blackboard Predict, in 2016, we moved to managed hosting and we procured a bundle of uh, uh, services from Blackboard at that time and Analytics for Learn um, was the analytics platform that we got at that time and a project board was established to oversee that project. A new PVC for Education was appointed onto that board as a senior stakeholder in 2016 
And Blackboard, um, particularly Richard and Alistair that are sitting here, were invited to pre present to our board about our analytics for learn opportunity. And I'm going to say sneakily, they threw in two slides about Blackboard Predict. And they showed the potential for predictive analytics. And uh, they knew what they were doing. And our uh, PVC education uh, immediately jumped on those two slides and said, if we don't grasp the opportunity for implementing a predictive analytics solution focused on retention as part of our analytics ambitions, we will have failed. So our board began a review of predictive analytics solutions. And I was quite annoyed when I came out of that meeting because I wanted analytics for learn. Some of the KPIs that I own in the institution and the Office for Digital Learning are questions like how many people are using discussion boards, how many people are using assessment and feedback, all those things that I wanted to know. Retention was something that was owned elsewhere in the faculties and schools, so I was annoyed that our resources were then going to be pushed into this, this PREDICT project. So I started the journey in quite a negative place, um, but that has changed as a result of being involved in this project when I've seen the benefits. So why Blackboard PREDICT for our pilot work? We looked at a number of predictive analytics platforms that were available at that time. And the number one reason we went with Blackboard Predict was the work that Blackboard are doing with the JISC's learning analytics uh, project. So JISC have a learning analytics platform and ambition in, in the UK. Without that connection to that work, we would not have partnered with, with Blackboard, I don't think. Um, we were very reassured that Blackboard were involved in a number of initiatives with other institutions looking at their readiness. Um, for implementing analytics and we thought we could learn a lot from that experience um, uh, that was brought into our project. There was also a lucky alignment between Ulster Student Record System banner and the PREDICT data manifest, so the description of the data that PREDICT needed. Um, at the time we were the first institution in, in uh, the UK that were implementing the solution and in the United States that manifest was written around banners so we knew what data we needed to get to, to make the prediction or give us the best opportunity to make that prediction accurate. And we were taking advantage of the gains that we got from the move to managed hosting. One of the things we found when we moved to managed hosting in 2016 was that it released staff to do more interesting things and the people who were involved in the, uh, historically who would have managed Blackboard in our institution, um, that resource was suddenly available to be involved in this new initiative and that was really exciting that suddenly there was a new project for those people to be involved in because they weren't involved in the day to day running and configuration of our, our learn environment. Um, Importantly for an analytics product, the integration with Blackboard Learn, there are lots of analytics solutions out there and quite often they need a separate single sign-on, a separate system that, that staff need to become familiar with. Analytics for Learn has reports built in at the modular teaching level with inside Blackboard and you can also look up students as, a, as an advisor at an institutional level but all that single sign-on is from, with, from within Blackboard which is already a familiar uh, interface for our academic colleagues. And there was also the rapid deployment opportunity because of the managed hosting project. Our, our infrastructure was existing in the, the, the Amsterdam data center. It was a very simple process to get the Blackboard data starting to flow into the predictive model. Um, it was a simple installation of a, of a telemetry building block within that data center and that was able to transfer the data into the Amazon Web Services environment um, where it's processed as part of the, 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 the modeling. And also a trusted and recent collaboration with Blackboard Consultancy. We partnered with Blackboard and our move to managed hosting. That project went very well and it was very re well received by our senior management on the back of a number of other projects in our central IT services that had failed in the, the previous years. So I think that trusted relationship with the consultancy really, really helped um, um, with, with the proposal from Blackboard. And of course the ultra user interface. I've been coming to teaching learning conferences for a number of years and I always am a little confused about when the Ultra UI is coming to various parts of the infrastructure. But Collaborate Ultra was really well received at Ulster because of the UI and that Ultra and that, that responsive uh, um, uh, theme. And that responsive theme is what's available inside Blackboard Predict. It's a very nice uh, uh, UI, uh, very much in line with, with Ultra. And it's really nice for us to be able to roll out those technologies that, that uh, make best use of that UI. So a little bit about the types of learning analytics. So we talked a little about the descriptive learning analytics. So in descriptive, it's what happened. 
Um, so what happened in diagnostics, it's why did it happen, in predictive analytics, it's what will happen. And that's the hard thing to do. It's predicting the likelihood of a student passing. That's, that's a really hard thing to do. Um, if we look at what, we're current, what we were currently doing at Ulster before Blackboard Predict, we had an annual report that was run for each faculty in school on retention figures by a quality management and audit unit. They produced PDFs and CSV files that were published on an internal intranet once a year after an annual cycle. Those spreadsheets were interpreted um, by uh, various program teams at times that they were coming in contact with central administration. Academic staff didn't want to engage with those spreadsheets and PDFs until they were being asked what they were doing around their retention rates, which was typically at an annual subject review or when a program was going through validation or revalidation. So that was an annual cycle of work that happened. Um, all this diagnostic and predictive stuff was happening through discussion. It was interpretation of what was, what was being presented. There was lots of people involved in those discussions and people were pulling out pieces of that retention and making so assumptions about correlation, um, um, coming up with ideas about why retention rates weren't right in certain programs and, and what the potential correlation was. And sometimes whole research projects spun out of some of those things. And I'm going to share... I'm, I don't know if I should share this, because, but I'm going to because uh, it's interesting. There was an entire retention project at Ulster that was looking at a student number as a predictor of whether that person was going to pass or not. And the higher the student number, the less likely that student was to pass. And this was a research project in computing. And the reasoning behind that by that team that we're looking at it is, because our data froze from UCAS, when somebody makes an application to Ulster University, if Ulster is their first choice and they're committed to coming to Ulster and they're engaged with that, that uh, program, they're going to have a, a smaller student number from somebody who came in via clearing who maybe picked Ulster as a third or fourth. And they were seeing this correlation between student number and the likelihood of a student passing in their course. And in that computing course, there was a high correlation, but an entire... Um, entire assumptions were being built around this activity and people were doing lots of analysis and review of this um, and lots of projects were spinning out as, as part of this discourse that weren't strictly true uh, or maybe they were true but there was a lot of resource that was being put into to learning about these things but all this thing took time and quite often these discussions were only happening every year or every two years when programs were being validated so if we look at that, uh, that, that's the stage that I've just described there. The, the annual process is done by Quality Management and Audit Unit. Um, that analysis is PDF, and then we have a number of institutional research projects that look at that data um, and, and have long-term, longitudinal projects around looking at uh, um, things like a sense of belonging in first year. Really valid research projects, but they're very longitude, longitudinal in nature. And there's very many good examples of local school and faculty projects. But just like rolling out technology-enhanced learning solutions, there's pockets of really brilliant activity happening, but it's not standardized across the institution. And in terms of the predictive, we've talked a little about that. There was lots of assumptions about correlation in that data. And I thought it'd be really interesting to look at a slide that comes from this quality management and audit unit when they're talking about their data. This is a slide that goes to academic colleagues showing them the number of data sets that they can use in their conversations about retention. And if you're an academic member of staff that's busy with teaching research, the likelihood of you going in and looking at CSVs and PDFs of retention data, revalidation reports, classification, external examiner reports, DLHE data, NSS, first SIP performance, PSRB, that's a huge amount of data for an academic to feel engaged with and to interpret. And you can even see the language that's being used in that department. They talk about the next cycle of data. It's very much about annual processes and cycles. So there's a lot of, of, of horrid PDFs and CSV data that's sitting uh, um, helping academics make decisions about retention interventions. We looked at all this and realized we needed to help academic staff. We needed to simplify some of that decision making, some of that data into a better UI. So the vision for predictive learning analytics at Ulster is quite simple. It's to improve retention rates, progression rates, and attainment. 
Um, so we want more people to complete our programs, we want more people to stay on our programs, and we want them to attain, where possible, the, the, the best possible degree award. But also it's about improving conversations. Um, a prediction is no good, uh, it's not a prophecy, and all it is is a way of having a conversation. And we find that there were lots of sporadic conversations about retention across the institution, but we wanted to enhance those conversations about learner data and to have these conversations sooner. So predictive learning analytics allow us to have those just-in-time conversations and to identify students at risk earlier. But we also wanted to challenge ourselves with institutional barriers around learning analytics projects, and that's ethics, it's policy, and it's governance around the use of learning, and learning data. We had a number of working groups across the institution looking at analytics, and there were so many institutional barriers for those projects ever happening that there was frustration from our PVC education around that. And he said, let's give it a go. If it doesn't work, we'll all have learnt together. And that's a really empowering statement to come from a senior manager, is that we're, we're participating in a pilot, and if it doesn't work, we'll have learnt something. Um, but we also wanted to learn about our own data capacity and capabilities. All the readiness surveys will tell us the types of people we need in our institution to make best use of data. Um, we wanted to review the quality of our own data and begin to cleanse and understand it better. We wanted to look at data hygiene. We in the education portfolio wanted to really look at the data that was important to us. Um, and that data hygiene in the education portfolio is something that perhaps our central IT services weren't as interested in because they had other KPIs and other business intelligence solutions that they were interested in. And that data was more complete than the data that was important to us in the education portfolio. And we wanted to test and stretch our IT policy and governance and we wanted to talk more about causation and correlation. Um, the, the causation of a student failing is really, really difficult. And it's even more so in higher education, I feel. Um, um, it, 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 there's so many things going on in that student's transition to higher education, personally, and uh, um, moving, moving to a, a, a new system from a very controlled environment. Um, and uh, there were lots of discussions happening. We wanted to improve those conversations with data. Um, so our PREDICT pilot, uh, it started in July 2017, and that's when we uh, signed the contract with Blackboard. Um, I said in the summary for this, we'd talk a little bit about technology, and there were some integration challenges with moving to uh, uh, PREDICT. Um, there's a, a, a piece of software called DataLink, which runs on a, a Windows server in our data center. Um, uh, we're an entirely Unix-based uh, IT infrastructure. And uh, we had to uh, negotiate with other parts of the university to get these things set up and integrated. Uh, data link sits between our student record system um, banner and the predict solution. And uh, there was a, a delay in getting that up and running. There were also some problems with the building block due to the fact that we at Ulster um, had an upgrade uh, uh, roadmap um, in the middle of our project. Um, so we upgrade uh, in June and January every year. So we had an upgrade in January of this year in the middle of the, 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 the project, and that caused some conflicts with the telemetry building block that, that uh, Blackboard had to work through. Um, the data validation took a lot longer than expected. So we were given a data manifest that described um, our, um, um, the data that was needed. Um, and that was very much written for a US perspective. We were the first clients within uh, the UK, and we had to do a lot of translation between the Blackboard consultants and ourselves to make sure that the data we were providing was accurate. It turned out that our installation of Banner was not a vanilla installation, and quite often the data points that we were given didn't exist, uh, and we had to look in different places for that data and, and reassure the project team that we were getting the right data. Um, the predictive model was developed and tested very rapidly, and that was unexpected. Um, we got a new consultant at Blackboard after a previous one left, and Mike in, in the US was involved in our project, and he produced a predictive model from our data with sufficient test data to satisfy us within about 10 days after getting the data. That was really unexpected for us. And the minute those dashboards became visible, all of a sudden, the conversations in the institution changed. We had had working groups set up to look at policy, to look at GDPR, to look at data protection, to look at ethics. The minute those dashboards become visible in a test environment, all those conversations resurfaced again. 
We thought we had a little more time with that, but the minute that, that became available, uh, things changed. At our student union, we're concerned about the potential mental health impact of students seeing dashboards. Our student support team became involved um, um, as a result of that about uh, concerns about language that might be used in interventions with students who have been identified as, 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 as at risk. And from within my own project team, there were concerns about GDPR and data privacy. I was very reassured of our compliance with, uh, um, uh, with this, but um, there were concerns about the Amazon Web Services, uh, uh, where the data was being stored, and we needed that reassurance. And there was a lot of to and froing between ourselves and Blackboard to get that reassurance written down so the project could progress, and I'm, I'm pleased to say that it has. In terms of going live, because there were some issues that were raised, um, our, our uh, PVC education asked us to build a companion course that would sit alongside PREDICT. So before any member staff within the institution gets access to predictive learning analytics, they have to go through this course, which covers core principles, strategic context, data sources, interventions, ethics, uh, and uh, uh, information about a research project and quiz. Um, I'm going to be releasing this under a Creative Commons license for anyone else that, that is going through this. And there's a resources slide at the end um, with a link to that. Um, it's currently password protected um, because it's going through a final review at the moment, but it will be publicly accessible at that link um, that's at the end of this presentation. Um, it's built in a, um, a, a really nice HTML5 um, um, uh, e-learning framework um, that you can download and reuse. So some of the core principles in our project, um, the core principle, the number one thing is that it is only being used to support students. So we don't want this data being used in disciplinary processes. It's only being used to support students. It's a pilot project and an expectation of that is we're going to talk a little more about data. Um, we're, we're being respectful that academic performance is quite likely a proxy to other things that are going on in that student's life. So there'll be potentially sensitive issues happening with students that are academically identified at risk. And that's folded into the, the support material that sits around our, our predictive solution. Um, and we, we, we must be careful to ensure that suitable signposting in intervention, uh, <clears throat> digital interventions, that uh, uh, students are signposted to appropriate support resources. A lot of our academic colleagues say, well, why is that student predicted to fail? And I'd love to be able to take them through the decision tree that resulted in that failure, but it's not available. We have to have faith that that prediction is making an accurate prediction. Um, but it's interesting to, 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 to think about that. It's just telling you they're likely to fail. It doesn't tell you why. Um, and learning analytics cannot present a complete picture of students' learning. And that, again, is that a prediction is not a prophecy. It's a catalyst for a conversation. So. Um, it, it wouldn't be very valuable if we just looked at that predictive number and said that student, you're guaranteed to fail. There'd be many reasons why that student may be predicted uh, to fail. And if that conversation is a challenging conversation that a student says, I really fundamentally disagree with that. My digital footprint has perhaps provided uh, 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 this figure. That's an interesting conversation to have and at least we'll have started that conversation. So the anecdotal feedback so far, um, overwhelmingly positive from those in the institution who own the KPIs around retention. So the, 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 the group that are actively using the solution at the moment own the KPIs around uh, retention and they're very positive about the benefits of the solution. There's been some really encouraging alignment between existing manual processes and what's being shown in the dashboards. So we have many colleagues in the institution who provide their own CSV analysis of their student uh, uh, profile based on downloading data from the grade center, looking at their interactions with other resources and, and uh, filtering their, their cohort um, uh, in a similar way to predict. And it's been really encouraging to see those academic staff who have a history of doing that, being reassured that similar, um, um, similar students are being predicted as at risk. But also predict is showing some real outliers to that data, which is really interesting. And it started conversations trying to understand why that student is being predicted to fail. Because there's been some examples where a student is performing very well um, in, in summative assessment, but they're being shown as quite a high indicator of failure. Um, and that started some interesting conversations trying to understand that prediction. 
Um, the openness of the testing model has helped us greatly. So the way predictive analytics, the predict solution uh, um, worked, it was built, our model was built on 80% of data and 20% of historical data was held back to test that predictive model. So we knew in that 20% how many students failed or how many students dropped out. Um, and having the openness of that and that 20% test uh, uh, segment set aside was really reassuring to us to know that the model was working as we expected. Um, there was negativity around some of the functionality um, because it's very much been aligned to US practice. Um, the idea of searching at a course level um, and ability to aggregate reports at a faculty school level aren't available in PREDICT at the moment. Um, there is a course search, but it's a drop down list of the over 1,000 programs that we have in our institution. And um, there's no way of filtering that. And that's the interface is very much built around subject, um, which is more relevant, I believe, to the US context. There's a lot of curiosity about the diagnostic element. Show me why someone is predicted to fail, and I can't show that to those skeptical people. Um, and that's been a real challenge in our conversations. The UI and the integration with the VLE has been very well received. Um, and I believe that simplified UI is the differentiator between Predict and other platforms. And interestingly, students are generally quite relaxed about having a dashboard visible, despite those who have pastoral care responsibilities urging caution. And that's what we have done as part of the project in our student union consultations and our student union members on our, our uh, uh, digital learning subcommittee. They've been quite positive about releasing that dashboard and allowing students to compare how they're, they're studying against uh, uh, their classmates. So what we hope to achieve with our project, um, it's going for institutional release tomorrow outside of the pilot group. So from tomorrow, every single academic member staff at Ulster will be able to complete that course that I, I talked about and get access to the system. Um, we hope to see increasing numbers of students completing a program of study, so um, we want to see uh, changes in our, our, our retention. I want to see improved attainments, and we want to, to see how uh, specific targets at faculty and school level are being supported by PREDICT. And we have a research project to look at that. And that, the, the design of that research project is really challenging because <coughs> There's an ethical responsibility to make sure that all students have the advantages of this. So you can't say for this group, we're gonna leave them out and we're gonna use predict with this group and we're gonna see how those two compare. So there's a lot of um, ethical debate happening in that research group at the minute um, around the ethics of that study. Um, but that's what we're hoping to measure is, is, is predict, predict's influence on, on those targets. And finally, we have a really realistic expectation of the value of predict as evidenced in the next slide. And this is a slide directly from Blackboard, and I think it's really interesting. Um, if there are any data analysts in the room, you'll, you'll know what an F-score comparison is better than I will. But as I understand this test, um, F-score, the, 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 you, you, can, you can see here the, 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 the lines showing, the, the, the solid line at the top is students who pass. So predicting that a student is going to pass is really easy. Um, and in order to show the value of predict, when it was run through the model, they said, right, let's just pick a random sample. So at Ulster University, approximately, there's a retention uh, um, figure of 8% of students, which is really high, um, drop out of, out of their course. So let's take a random sample of 8% of your entire student population and see how many of those passed. And a random sample is really quite good because only 8% would ever drop out of a course or fail, um, that if you run that 8% random sample through the, the predictive model, you'll, you have a good chance of some of those succeeding. Um, the hard part is predicting those who fail. So this line is looking at grades only. So if you look at grades as an indicator of student success, so if you look at summative grades and formative grades as a student progresses through their study, if they're achieving scores of 60%, 70%, there's a good likelihood of them passing. But the value, we're not even doing that in a standard way across the institution looking at grades. Um, the value is the difference between if we were doing that and predict, and that's about 10% or 12%. But if we look at the number of students that that is uh, um, representative across the institution, if we were getting 12% gains in our retention data as a result of this predictive solution, 
we'd be in a very positive place and our senior management would be very pleased. So we're being realistic about the value and I think it's very interesting that Blackboard are very open about that during the testing process because all of us will have had presentations from other learning analytics companies that will tell us that their solution will raise uh, uh, your attention rates by, um, or reduce your attention rates by 50%, 60%. But this was a very clear analysis of our data and this was very valuable. But it also helped us understand what the value is we are getting from this solution. So what we've learned at Ulster, um, this is coming up to the last slide, um, institutional barriers would have prevented a project without our PVC having that strong leadership. I do believe having participated in ethical discussions around analytics for a number of years, that it's very hard to push through those institutional barriers through committee. Uh, our PVC did show strong leadership. The ownership of learning analytics project is contested in every institution. We became owners of the learning analytics project at Ulster within the education portfolio. I have many contact, contacts in ISD and business intelligence parts of the institution that felt they owned learning analytics. And who owns that is a real difficulty in every institution. It was helpful for us when the PVC education said, we are going to own this project. Um, and we're going to push through, push it along. Um, the benefits of the project are not necessarily those we defined at the start of the project. So we went into the project thinking about um, making a positive cont contribution to our retention rates, but it's the conversations and the discussions and the new approaches to intervention strategies that have been really encouraging as the data started to, to bubble up. And those conversations and changes in thinking have really been accelerated as a result of having that standardized dashboard across all programs and modules. Um, it's also possible to get a pilot project established without the optimal team configuration. On the technical side, there was myself and our server administrator that, that did the, 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 the predict integration. Um, provided the data and, and, and got it integrated with Blackboard. Um, that's a much smaller team than the recommended team size in the Blackboard literature. And we did feel concerned going into that project that we didn't have everybody that we, it was recommended we might have. We had to borrow individuals at key points of the project for a half day or a day just to make sure the assumptions we were making about data was accurate. But we didn't need dedicated administrative uh, support or ISD support as part of the project. There is functional overlap between aspects of predict and functionality in Blackboard Learn. If we look at the retention center or course reports, there's a lot of quite interesting data in there that could also help um, retention uh, interventions. But the UI has really changed engagement. Um, it's quite a cumbersome process to log in to learn, go to a course report, select your, your filters and run that. Um, or to set up alerts in the, the uh, performance dashboard or the retention center. The UI and that stripped down version has really helped us. Human judgment is essential. Um, we have many academic staff who appear to have an intuition about what students, why students are failing, but quite often it's based on experience. An academic member staff who's been teaching for 20 years is already doing a prediction in their mind based on their current cohort matching those people's experiences with previous students that they have known. But that's not representative of every academic member of staff. If you just completed a PhD, you're coming into your first year of undergraduate teaching, you don't have those patterns and those, uh, that ability to make those predictions. So something that, that feels intuitive for, for an experienced academic member of staff is not representative of everybody teaching across our institution, or, or indeed I would argue any institution. Um, Predict helps start the conversation with a student. It's never going to provide that 360 degree view. And every committee and every meeting I've sat in, people will ask me questions about what if we included this piece of data and why aren't we bringing in this piece of data and what about this piece of data? Let's accept that we're not ever going to get to that stage of having a 360 degree view of that student experience. But what we can have is a way of starting a conversation with a student to explore those other issues based on the data that we have readily available and that can be implemented quickly. And predict is part of a process. It's not a standalone tool. It's, part of, it's changing how we think about interventions and who has responsibility. The tool is only constructive when it's accompanied by interventions. We all know that, that the tool standalone is not going to be valuable without uh, those interventions. And those conversations about interventions are definitely better as a result of engaging with PREDICT.